So, I have a collection of bird photos that I have taken. I do not, I am missing a bird. I am missing the bald eagle. I thought this was the perfect time to tell you all how to watch a bird and take a photo of it. So, first of all, you would like a pair of binoculars. If you would like to watch a bird, you first need binoculars to watch it. Not a telescope, not your eyes. Second, you need a nice comfortable place to sit. I do not have one. I am screwed. Next, you want to be camouflaged for the environment. As you can see, I am camouflaged for my environment. So, when you're looking out into the sky, there's a number of tips and or tricks you can use to find a bird. Number one, be very conscious of what birds you are looking for. Whether it be a red, uh, red robin, blue sparrow, uh, orange duckling, it just depends on what you're looking for. I'm looking for a bald eagle. Next, when you are bird watching, make sure the bird is native to your environment. For example, I meet a lot of morons who like to take photos of ducklings in the middle of winter. I tell them, when they tell me they can't find it, I tell them, you deserve to be fired. So, first of all, you look out into the scenery and you look around. You would like to find a tree preferably. So, you'll notice I have a lot of trees in the environment. This means I have a lot of places to look. If you live in, let's say, Siberia, for example, you cannot worry about trees. You will only find maybe one or two, and they will not have leaves. So, next, when you find your trees, you would like to look preferably at a tree with a nest in it. If the tree has a nest in it, you will probably find a bird. Be wary of the signs that that nest may not be a bird nest. If there are bees coming out of it, it is a bee's nest. If there are wasps coming out of it, it is a wasp nest. If hornets are coming out of it, it's a hornet's nest. I cannot tell you how many times a person has been stung because they thought they were looking at a bird's nest and end up looking at a wasp nest. Next of all, your environment could potentially be hazardous. I've met many people who have looked out in their environment and seen a crocodile and attempted to look at one. This will make them angry. And also, you are a bird watcher, not a crocodile watcher. Now, this is a particular problem in Florida. A lot of my avid Floridian bird watchers tend to look at crocodiles, make them angry, and die. So, to avoid this, do not look a crocodile directly in the eye. Luckily, they're kind of pointed out a little bit, so you may only look at one or the other. That'll make them half angry, so you might want to avoid that also. Next. A very, very important step is do not look at the bird. You must watch the bird. I've met many new bird watchers who are bird lookers instead. This is a humongous problem. They typically never learn from their mistakes and they remain their whole life a bird looker. You must be a bird watcher. Now, we need to teach you how to watch a bird. First of all, do not drop your binoculars. This is important because if you drop them, it might damage them. Do not touch the lens of your binoculars. This could smudge them up. If you smudge your binoculars, throw them off the edge and get new ones. You may be asking, why can't I just clean them off? Well, I'm a part-time owner of Binoculars Incorporated. So, a very important step while you're bird watching is make sure you're looking at the correct bird. I cannot tell you a number of times when a new bird watcher has think that they've been watching a blue sparrow when they've been watching a red robin. It's unfortunately a huge problem in our country, especially for you those folks who are colorblind. Now, when you're on looking into your scenery, make sure to find a nest. Again, I've said this before, but the nest is important because the bird has to return there. You know, but if it is a bee's nest, the bird will not return there. So, if, it, if the bird's nest is eggs, that is a very good sign that the, that the bird will return. If it does not, it could have been abandoned. You don't know. Next of all, Make sure you are not being a very large presence and being very loud and annoying. This may stop the birds from, you know, coming around your scenery because they're scared of you. It's a huge problem in our country. And I am, for all of you who are hunters, I have a couple tips for you. If you see a bird in its nest, now is the proper time to shoot it. And if you see a bird that is not part of your collection, take a photo of it. If you see a bird, for example, who is, you know, Red Robin, and you're looking for a bald eagle, now is the time to take out a rifle and shoot it. 
because it is not what you were looking for and thusly is not important. Another important step is bait. Birds like to eat things, particularly worms. A good purchase may be a bucket of worms. Take the bucket of worms and throw it. The birds will probably go for the worms. If the birds have gone for the worms, you can snap a photo of it. Uh, now, a lot of people don't know this, but when you watch a bird, you cannot snap a photo of it without having a camera. If you would like to snap a photo of a bird, you must have a camera, particularly a good one. Now, you say, sir, I do not have a camera. Do you have a iPhone? Pull out the iPhone and take a photo of it. This is particularly important if you like to sell your photos. This is why I'm a professional bird watcher. I sell my photos to archaeology books, to geography books, to geology books, all sorts of science and social studies books. So, when you sell your photos, you make sure to market them correctly. If you tell someone that I have a photo of a red robin and you got a blue sparrow, you might get gypped. And <laughs> you might get gypped, okay? And this is a particular problem around these parts. Now, while you are looking for your birds, make sure that these birds are not evil birds that will try to attack you. Many a time has a person attempted to fire at a bird with a rifle, for example, and ended up losing both of their eyes. They can no longer hunt after this point, so it might be very important that you try to avoid this. This is why I wear glasses at all times. In case a bird tries to eat my eyes out, I can avoid that. Now, when you are looking for these birds, it is fairly important that you are looking for a male or a female bird. This is because if you're looking for a baby bird, you probably will not find them as often because they'll be covered up by the mother and, and you know, other birds. Also, I forgot to mention this in the photo of me uh, like talk, talk about taking photos of birds, but if the bird is moving It might be preferable to not take a photo of it because it'll be all blurry and stuff This is another reason why you might want to find the nest of the bird because you can take a photo of the bird with your camera Preferably the good one Another important step is to turn off all heat and smoke making things This is important because birds do not like smoke and will choke on it. They have very small lungs So smoke will cause them to die And we don't want that it's a huge problem, specifically in our Midwestern regions. All these people with their Raygart grills keep cooking, and then they kill the bird population. Many times I try to find a bald eagle, and it is dead. Now, once you have found your bird and taken a photo of it, it may be important to save the photo. The photo is important because if you lose the photo, you may have to take another one. Now, many of new bird lookers or bird watchers tend to lose their photos. I tell them, too bad, so sad. I cannot help you if you lose your dang photo. So, it's important you put it in a scrap book or sell it to someone to keep it for later. Now, after all of this, you can be content and go home with your new photo of your bird. And remember my main tip. Do not be a bird looker, be a bird watcher. This concludes my TED talk.